Yeah. Now that might sound a little bit woo woo, right? But I've had far too many experiences in my life where this has proved to be 100% accurate. Now, I'm absolutely stoked to be standing up here in front of this amazing crowd today, and I would be honoured if I could share my story with you guys. Would that be okay? Yeah. Okay, first I'd just like to introduce you to my family. My mum and dad, Laurel and Chris, had five children. I was the middle child there in the middle, and I was mum's favourite because I was wearing the same hairdo as her. <laughs> Over in, the, uh, over in the backyard where my grandma lived in a granny flat and we had a great little tight little community going on here. And this photo is really special to me because this is the last known photograph of our family together. This next, next period was, was the toughest period uh, in my life. My mum and dad's marriage uh, separated and I was left as the man of the house. And uh, with my little brother and sister and over the next period we had to watch my mum's mental health deteriorate to the stage where she first had my little brother and sister taken off her hands, then she was then hospitalised and heavily medicated. And the sad part about this story is that her health did not improve. I was sitting at home one day and my best mate Macca, he's still my, my best mate to this day, he called me up and said, Ferg, we hate seeing you like this. Would you like to come and live with us? I said yes. I was very lucky I found my passion early in life. I barracked for the St Kilda Footy Club and I wanted to play in the AFL. Woo! Woo! I was very determined, I was very aggressive at the football because physical pain was not in the same category as the emotional pain that I previously felt. In year, year 11 and 12 I lived here with my old brother. And I finished high school, and that was a win for me because when you live in the lower class end of town with no parental guidance whatsoever, that comes with its certain challenges. Well I had a lot of help from those around me because I was having a red hot crack, and I didn't complain, well, I didn't really have anyone to complain to. And uh, in 2012, uh, 2002, my dream came true. I got drafted to the St Kilda Footy Club. And, uh, they gave me the number 21, which I've been wearing all through junior footy. And this is a photo of me taking a hanger on my favourite player and the captain of the St Kilda Footy Club, Nick Rewalt, who is one of the greatest leaders of all time. Um, I spent six years on the list there, and it was just an incredible experience to be in a team with such motivated, driven people with great leadership. After my six years there, I, uh, I got a job as an apprentice electrician and I was told when you get a job here, you'll be set for life. But when I got there, I very quickly understood that there was more to life than being locked up in this cage for 10 hours a day. I was playing footy for the Sale Footy Club and after my first year there, there was a job opportunity that, that arose to be, to be uh, coach of the club and I flirted with the idea. Everyone around me thought I was crazy, you know, not the right type of personality, the players won't follow you, too much responsibility, you should finish your apprenticeship first. I said yes to that opportunity and this is the proudest day of my life because this is the most successful year in the history of the Sale Footy Club. It was over 130 years old and I taught myself a very valuable lesson and that was to never ever ask a third party whether you're capable of doing a job because they have no idea the amount of passion that you've got to do the job with. <laughs> if you have enough passion, you will find a way, you will acquire the skills and you will find a way to get the job done. When I was third years of age, I just had my third ankle reconstruction. I, I told a friend that I would try isogenics at the end of the footy season after the shenanigans. And, uh, <laughs> The surgeon told me that uh, I should give up footy because my ankle was worn out. This pissed me right off. I said, Dennis came to me at the perfect time. Within 90 days, I was fitter than I've ever been in my entire life. And I was very in tune with my body. I knew that this had to be shared. There's my uh, little sister there, Bella. She lost 30 kilos leading into her 21st birthday. There's my little brother Grant, who uh, 
He lost a dozen kilos, transformed his health, and there's my mum. Now she's the happiest I've seen her in a very, in pretty much since I can remember. <laughs> I wanted to know more, so I got in my car, drove two and a half hours to Melbourne, um, because uh, I wanted to know more. This was something different, and I rocked up to Super Saturday, and when I walked in, there was people dancing and yelling and screaming. I was thinking, where the hell am I? <laughs> I think Shed was dressed up as a reindeer. <laughs> um, I walked in there and I saw Danny Catania. She was building a biostatic business. And I thought, wow, my, my belief in the products went from 110 to 150% right there. Then a fellow by the name of Ben Cully walks to the stage, a construction worker. He spoke about this, this period of having to get out of his own way and what happened to his success in his business when he did that. I thought, wow, what if I got out of my way right now? What if I didn't worry about all the bullshit noise and just focus 100% on helping people? Woo! Yeah. Woo! You know, he also spoke about you know, not making the decision for other people whether they like biosogenics or not. It's our job to expose as many people as we possibly can to this amazing help. He, made me, or he encouraged us to, to set goals. I set three goals. One was to, to get a new four-wheel drive. I've been driving around a shitty Commodore Ute for far too long. <laughs> Another one was to um, travel to America because I've never been there before. And the next goal was to free myself from the job that didn't light me up. The best advice he gave me that day was to introduce myself to a fellow by the name of David Wood. I brought David's CD set and I put it in my car when you fall drive. And uh, listened to him all the way to work, all the way home from work, whenever I was in my car. And I just loved his philosophy on life so much. Not necessarily network marketing, but just life. Now, if you can follow these tips that I've got up here, say yes, tell the truth, don't ask for permission, and go first. Okay, that's going to set you up uh, for accelerating success, I'm telling you. So this time last year, Jacob and Mary Lee offered to come down after celebration and do an event in my hometown. That was an oh shit moment. But David was <laughs> on my shoulder and he said, yes, do it. So we ran a great event. And then after the event, Jacob said to me, he goes, well, you should do this every week. I was thinking, this one's kidding, isn't he? <laughs> and then David chipped in and he said, say yes, folks. I said, said yes to that. Now for the next six months straight, I ran a launch party. And um, I just want to talk about posture for a second. Now posture, I've got a simple formula for this. And it goes, you times conversations equals posture. Say yes to talking about the product, say yes to, to talk, telling a story, say yes to picking up the phone, say yes to doing a launch party, and your posture will grow and grow and grow, but you have to do your apprenticeship. All right? Now, the sentence, I am not ready, you just delete that out of your vocabulary because that's going to take you nowhere fast. All right? Some simple tips, you want to be a product of the product. You want to be someone whose health is going in the right direction. You can't expect someone to do something that you're not prepared to do yourself. Don't take advice of negative, small-minded, uneducated people. If someone's not happy with you, that's only because they're not happy with themselves. You must, you must plug in, you must go to events, you must develop yourself as a person because if you only listen to the people around you, the chances of your goals coming true are very, very small because the people around you have never done what you're trying to do and they're going to think you're crazy. All right? So you've got to plug in. You've got to plug in and, and listen to people that have done this before. There's so many stories coming through. It's happening more and more. We've just got to plug in. Now, this was my goal number two that came true. I managed to travel to the States. This thing called the Indulgence Package. Absolutely incredible. Got to fly over the um, Vegas Strip in a chopper. Got to meet the great Peter Cully. Get a little bit cozy there, sorry. <laughs> and uh, that was an incredible experience. Now, on the way back from America, I walked straight into a grand final in football. And the coach didn't know this, but I did not train once for the entire season because my ankle was worn out. I just want to thank Isogenic for that premiership. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Top Achievers, Hamilton Island, and I got to take the great man David Wood out of my CD player, turn into a real person, and got to swirl the Merlot with the great man. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that just made me realise the, the importance of surrounding yourself with positive people that are going to lift you up. That was an incredible experience. 
Now this is just, uh, this was made six months ago. I had, uh, had, 50, had 20 minutes at Smoko and 30 minutes at lunchtime to eat my lunch and build my business because you know they have your phones on you when you're in the oil and gas industry. So I was hustling and um, if, if, if you want to do it guys, you can do it, it doesn't matter. You know, there, there is no excuses really. Now, I, I work part time as a personal trainer and I, I've got, my life is full of choice. So I just want to thank Isogenics for giving me the freedom that I, that I have right now. And look guys, coming away, coming away from this event, you really do have two options. You can get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready to go nowhere, okay? Or you can start saying yes, okay, and get paid to learn on the way. Yeah. And you cannot fail. Yeah. So I know what I choose. Yeah.